Hey scholars, I wanted to record this video after I had a chance to score some of the skill assessment 1.4 where you had to create your own argument in response to a topic. Uh, and so I've pulled here a sample argument that I found um, that was uh, pretty typical of a lot of the um, responses that I had. Uh, and I wanted to just kind of take you through this example argument and show you where it doesn't quite work uh, and show you some techniques that you might be able to use to make your arguments uh, work a little bit better. So let's take a look at this sample argument here. The claim uh, starts down here at the bottom. The military should be allowed to recruit in high schools. Now we know from our study of different types of claims that a claim that deals with the future tense, what should or should not be done, that's a claim of policy. Uh, this particular assessment asks you to write a claim of value, so you want to be very careful there. Uh, I've seen a lot of claims of policy on the last couple of assessments, and the assessments haven't asked for that. They've asked for uh, a claim of fact on the first one and a claim of value on the second one. So be careful there. Make sure you know your different between the claims. Um, but I can't really just change it to, uh, I can't really reword this into a claim of value um, because everything else is potentially relying on that idea. So I'm just going to color that red for now uh, and come back to it in a little bit uh, and see if I can't modify it once I change some other things. So the military should be allowed to recruit in high schools because the military enlistment rate has significantly dropped. Um, these ideas seem at first glance to be only tangentially related. Um, and I think the, the biggest problem I have here uh, is that there's the, the terms don't technically match. This statement is about the military uh, and recruiting in high schools. This statement is about the military enlistment rate and the fact that that rate has dropped. Uh, and so what could make this a little bit uh, cleaner of an argument would be to make the military the subject of both statements. Um, still, it does kind of have the concept of the military in here. It's the military and its dropping enlistment rate. So if I were to phrase this as a couple of, uh, uh, couple of uh, statements here, if I can get this to work, there we go. Uh, my claim would be something like this. Uh, the military equals should be allowed to recruit in high schools. Okay, there's the first one. And then my evidence statement would be something like the military equals enlistment rate drop significantly. There we go. So it does contain a matching term in the military, uh, and I would just need to find a way to uh, connect enlistment rate dropping significantly to should be allowed to recruit in high schools. Um, so let's take a look at what the assumption is here, see if it connects those two terms. The assumption here says recruiting in high schools would raise enlistment rates. Hmm, that's inventing brand new terms. Recruiting in high schools, yeah. and raise enlistment rates. So right away, we have a problem with our assumption here. It just doesn't connect the evidence to the claim. Uh, and one of the reasons why it, it, it doesn't do so is because connecting the evidence to the claim is, is actually going to be kind of difficult based on the terms that we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just delete that because I know that it's completely wrong. Um, and uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and delete this as well, um, just because of how, how tricky it is connecting those two statements together. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that blank for now and see if I can find a better way to get to my claim here. All right, so looking up here at the two examples, remember you were supposed to write uh, an, a claim supported by a premise, that's your argument through enthymeme, and the premise supported by examples, that's your argument through example. Um, looking at my two examples here, if we uh, go back for a moment and look at the premise, you'll see that the military enlistment rate has dropped significantly. That was the statement that this student originally made. Um, in addition to being difficult to connect to the claim, it's actually not a great statement for what our two examples are showing here. Because this says the military enlistment rate has dropped. And so to support that with examples, we need uh, evidence that shows 
uh, one amount in one particular time and place, and then a lower amount at a, at a more current time and place. That's, that's how you demonstrate a decreasing amount of something, is you, you have to show an actual change over time, a, a lowering over time. And if we look at our examples here, it says only 4% of 17 to 24-year-olds say they plan on joining the military. Well, uh oh, that's just a, a static number. That's not, I mean, maybe that's showing a drop if uh, maybe this was different five years ago. Maybe 8% said they had plans five years ago and joined the military. That would support this. But just saying that this static number of right now only 4% say they would plan on joining the military, that doesn't really support this idea here. And because it doesn't provide an example of this, then naturally our assumption is going to be kind of messed up. Our assumption here says 4% is less than it was in the past. Well, is it? It doesn't say that in our evidence. Uh, and that brings me to another point that I wanted to make. You cannot add new information to your assumption. Your assumption has to connect ideas that are already in the evidence and the claim together. You can't use your assumption to add new information to help explain something. So this assumption's got to go. We'll take that out as well. Let's take a look at the other example here. The National Guard is 8,000 people short of its enlistment goal. Once again, we've got a single number, not a change over time, so it can't really demonstrate a drop or a change in anything. The assumption here, the National Guard falling short of its enlistment goal, shows dropped enlistment rates. Again, a well-phrased assumption, it's just it doesn't actually show that. So let's get rid of that as well. All right, so we already said that this premise was highly problematic to begin with, so I'm just going to delete that. And now all I'm left with are my two examples. And this is actually a really good technique for devising an argument because we learn new information. We learn new ideas based on things that we observe, based on specific facts that we encounter. We draw conclusions based on that. And so that's actually how we should technically formulate our arguments to begin with. We should take the existing facts that are there and from that work backward to draw conclusions and make specific claims about that. So what I need to think of is what sort of thing can I, what sort of idea can I conclude based on these two examples? The fact that only 4% of this group says they plan on joining the military and that the National Guard is 8,000 people short of, an, of its enlistment goal. Well, one thing that I can conclude from both of those uh, that might make a better uh, supporting idea here is that the military is facing a recruitment shortage. Yeah, yeah, that works because if I said the military is facing a recruitment shortage, this idea is an example of that. And this idea is also an example of that. In fact, that's how I'm going to phrase my assumption here. Um, because only 4% of this group say they plan on joining the military, therefore the military is facing a recruitment shortage, uh, shortage since only 4% of 17 to 24-year-olds planning, beg your pardon, on joining the military is an example of the military facing a recruitment shortage. Okay. Remember, when we write uh, assumptions for arguments through example, we can kind of cheat a little bit. We don't have to have precisely matching terms because we're technically matching multiple terms at once. Uh, and so whenever you have a, a, an argument through example, your assumption can simply be this thing is an example of this other thing. Uh, and when you do that, you can actually hear whether or not it is truly an example. So is this an example of a military recruitment shortage? Yeah, I'd say it is. And we'll do the same thing over here. Because the National Guard is 8,000 people short of its enlistment goal, therefore the military is facing a recruitment shortage. So something like the National Guard being 8,000 uh, people short of its enlistment goal is an example of the military facing recruitment shortages.
And once again, I've gone over my box size here that I can really do easily. That's okay, because I can just kind of move other things around. There we go. All right. Okay. So again, if I read this out loud, it... it Okay, I've just discovered the paywall for this screencasting program. It cut me off there, so I'm starting a new video picking up where we left off. I'll edit this together so it'll be uh, not quite seamless uh, in the final run, but it'll just keep going. So again, as I was saying, uh, by voicing the assumption in this way, we can tell whether or not this is actually an example of this. Is the National Guard being 8,000 people short of its enlistment goal an example of uh, the military facing a recruitment shortage? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so that brings us to our claim. Now that we've changed everything up here, our claim, not only is it wrong to begin with because it was a policy claim and not a value claim, but it's not actually supported by any of these ideas anymore. So we need to continue working backwards to see if we can come up with a claim of policy that's supported by this idea. So because the military is facing a recruitment shortage, therefore what? Therefore, what? We, we know that this needs to be about military recruitment in high schools. So I could say something like this. The military could benefit from recruiting in more high schools. Okay. And I'll make this uh, black because it's new. There we go. So because the military is facing a recruitment shortage, therefore it could benefit from recruiting in more high schools. Uh, that sounds like it makes sense. Let's double check by adding our, uh, our assumption together. So again, if I were to piece this together the right way, I have the military equals facing recruitment shortage. And I have the military equals would benefit from recruiting in more high schools, something like that. Okay, so I need to find some way to connect these last two terms of, uh, you know, facing recruitment shortages equals benefit from recruiting in more high schools. Oops. There we go. So you need to come up with some statement like that. Now, it's a little clumsy connecting those two statements together. I can't really just say this would benefit. Facing recruitment shortage would benefit. That doesn't make any sense. The, the real logic here is that I'm suggesting that any uh, entity, any group or entity um, with recruitment shortages uh, could benefit from... Um, more recruiting in, or excuse me, could benefit from recruiting in more. There we go, something like that. There we go. And that, that makes sense there. It's a little inelegant, but uh, it, it does make sense there. Uh, now, I want to show you one last technique uh, that could kind of help you out in the future. Anytime you have an uh, assumption that is really hard to phrase or an assumption where you're having a real tough time connecting terms, um, maybe consider that you're taking too big of a logical leap between those two items. So because the military is facing a recruitment shortage, therefore it could benefit from recruiting in more high schools. There's actually some extra steps in logic that I could add there that might help. So here's what I mean. If I found that this particular um, assumption is just too difficult to work with, I could perhaps add a middle step here. Yeah. Something like this. Because the military is facing a recruitment shortage, therefore, the military could benefit from a new pool of potential recruits. 
And if the military could benefit from a new potential pool, or excuse me, a new pool of potential recruits, then the military could benefit from recruiting in more high schools. Let's, uh, let's see if this one is easier to formulate our assumptions with. So because the military is facing recruitment shortage, therefore the military could benefit from a new pool of potential recruits. I need to connect recruitment shortage to new pool of recruits. So any entity uh, facing a facing recruitment shortages could benefit from a new pool of potential recruits. Something like that. That feels like a much better statement than just jumping right to any entity facing recruitment shortages could benefit from recruiting more in high schools. That, that statement is just kind of awkward because it would require a lot of um, a lot of extra evidence to make it uh, just more logically sound. Whereas this one, yeah, it's pretty logical that if you have recruitment shortages and you find a new pool of recruits, it's like like any uh, any sort of industry. You know, if you have supply shortages or you're short on resources, yeah, finding a new uh, place to get those resources would help your shortages. Uh, and what really helps is connecting it to our final claim here about military recruiting in high schools. Because the military could benefit from a new potential or a new pool of potential uh, recruits, therefore the military could benefit from recruiting in high schools. Since uh, high schools provide a new pool of potential recruits. There. That makes a lot of sense. They do. Yeah, it's a, a bunch of uh, teenagers and that's a huge demographic for military recruitment. Okay, so that's another technique that I wanted to show you there uh, that anytime you're having a lot of trouble uh, voicing that assumption, maybe it's because you're missing a key uh, sort of enthymemetic argument uh, somewhere in there. All right, that's all I had for this video. I hope this helped and I hope that uh, it'll help you uh, study uh, harder or study more, um, I don't know, uh, effectively for the upcoming unit assessment.